Welcome. In a previous video, I talked about using hardware encoding with FFmpeg on a Mac. And in this video, I'm going to talk about using hardware encoding with FFmpeg on Windows 10. So I'll put a link in the description to my website, and I'll put links in there. Um, I have a link to a video on how to install FFmpeg, and the other links I talk about in this video, and I also have the commands I use in this video um, on the website too, so you can just copy and paste those. So if you go to the FFmpeg uh, page on hardware acceleration, there's going to be a, a chart here, and you can look at Windows, and it talks about um, the different APIs. And in this video, I'm going to be focusing on Intel, but there um, are similar uh, APIs for AMD and NVIDIA. So if we look at Windows here, we can see yes next to um, Direct3D, Direct3D9. Uh, we have Media Foundation, OpenCL, and then if we go down to the FFmpeg implementation status, it talks about, um, like, if we go to Media Foundation, now let's see, Windows, we have LibMFX here, so there's an encoder for LibMFX um, that's a hardware input. So. We have, um, you can check here to see what's compatible with your system, but this can get a little confusing. Um, I have a previous video also where I talk about identifying the processor in your computer. So the computer I'm on now has an i5-4250U. And if I go to Intel's page on that, we see that it's a Haswell uh, family processor. And then if we go to the Wikipedia page for the Intel QuickSync video, we can look here under Haswell and we see it has MPEG-2 and H.264 um, hardware encoding. So you need the software, the FFmpeg software, and the hardware to both contain um, the necessary hardware encoding and then the code to make it work. So um, FFmpeg does have HEVC uh, hardware encoding here, and if we look on this chart, we would need a Skylake or higher processor to encode HEVC uh, using QuickSync. So let's go to a terminal here. I'll just type in CMD. And I have uh, Windows Services for Linux installed on this, although it's not absolutely necessary, but I'm going to use that um, so I can use grep and some other tools. So I'll just type bash here. And then I can type ffmpeg.exe, and it's working. So I'll go back up to this, and I'll type space dash encoders, and it will list out all of the encoders we have. Then I will pipe that to, um, I'll say 264, I'll type grep 264. So I don't know if like a Windows command line, if there's another uh, similar way to filter on this. Um, you can also just look through the list, but I'm gonna look for that. So I look for 264 and you'll see all these encoders available for it. You can see this is the default libx264. And then we have the this AMF, this NV encode, and then QSV. And this one's the one we're working with today. It's QSV is Quick Sync Video, and you can see this other one is NVIDIA. So the Quick Sync Video, it says Intel Quick Sync Video Accelerator. So as you see QSV here, then we can actually go here and say QSV, and we can look at all of the QSV or the Quick Sync Video encoders we have. So we have QSV, we have HEVC, which is uh, H.265, we have MJPEG, Motion JPEG, and then MPEG-2. So this is what FFmpeg supports, but the hardware I'm on doesn't support HEVC uh, codec with hardware acceleration. So that's not gonna work. If I tried to use that, it would just give me an error. So we want to use this H.264 QSV. So I'll go to my web page here, and this is the one I made for the Mac, but it would be similar for Windows. So if we look at this command here, we have FFmpeg-I and then train.mp3 or mp4. Four. So I'll go to my desktop here. So I have this train video. And this is a 4K video of a train here. Okay. And we want to convert that down to 1080p using hardware encoding. So next I ran this command here. And this is ffmpeg i. So that's input is train.mp4. Then we have dash vf, which is video filter, and we say scale equals 1920 by 1080, and that would make a 1080p video. We say dash A codec, which is the audio codec, and we say copy. We don't want to change that at all, we just want to copy it over. And then dash V codec, 
I have H264 underscore video toolbox. So this was for the Mac, but on this one, it'll say H264 underscore QSV. And in the link in the description, I'll put the correct um, value in there. And then we save this as train hardware default uh, 264. So I've done this already. And if we go to this video, we'll see it looks really blurry, um, especially if we get some motion on here. Let's see if I can get the train up. It's not as sharp as the other videos. And that's because um, the hardware encoder uses a lower bit rate by default. So we want to use a better uh, bit rate. So what I did next is I ran this command and I'm using, in this one, I'm just using the default H.264 encoder and I'm encoding uh, five seconds of video. So I've done that. Let me see if I can find a terminal here. Is it this one? Let me just get a new terminal. And I can type FF probe and then I can type train um, underscore test. Okay. So this is the five second video I made. And what we want to do is look for this on the video stream H.264. We want to look at the bit rate. And this was 6225 uh, kilobits per second. So I want to use this bit rate on the with the hardware encoder. So I'll close this. So that gets me this here. So I have FFmpeg I train.mp4 and then uh, video filter scale to 1080p. We're copying the audio and we go to the video codec. We're using um, the hardware encoder and then the bit rate we do, I'm just gonna do 6300K. So it's funny, on the Mac when I did this, it came up as 6700K. And on the Windows, it came up with 6300K. Truth is, you can adjust this and play with it and see you know, what the lowest bit rate you can use is that gives you the quality you want. So this is uh, you know, highly subjective, you can adjust it. Um, but I just went with 6300 because that's what it said to do. So I did that, ran it again, and then we got this is the hardware encoded version. And you can see it's a lot sharper here. We get the train coming up. There's a lot of detail. And then I also ran this with the software encoder so we can compare. And you can see it also has a lot of default uh, detail. Okay. So now let's see if I can show this in detail view of the desktop. So we see here I have the original train file is uh, 710 megabytes. We have the uh, train with the default uh, hardware, hardware encoding with default settings. Uh, it came out to 10 megabytes, but that didn't look very good. So we ran the test, which is the train test. So it was five seconds. We found out our settings, and then I encoded it using the hardware encoder, and that's this here, and it came out to 76 megabytes, and then I ran it with the software encoder. It also came up to 76 megabytes. So they're about the same. They're not exactly the same, and I'm not sure exactly why, but that doesn't seem strange to me that they're a little bit off. So the, the thing here, what did we gain by using the hardware encoder? Well, on the left here, I have the hardware encoder I ran, and on the right, I have the software encoder. And with the hardware encoder, it was two minutes and 17 seconds to encode the video. With the software encoder, it was five minutes, 37 seconds. So this was a huge difference to do this. Um, if you have a lot of videos to encode, this can make a huge difference um, using the hardware encoder versus the software encoder, um, especially once you get it set up, because this seems like a lot of work to figure out exactly what settings you want, but, you know, I suggest you make notes when you get this dialed in right, and then next time you go to do it, you know exactly uh, what to type in. So, well, I know this can be very complicated, so if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.